Hello and welcome back everyone to the video series dedicated show on MTV that has reached its final form. That's right, we're talking about The Challenge Season 39 Battle for a New Champion Episode 15. We have officially made it into the Conquest portion, the final stretch of the game, and the Conquest portion starts off very tense. And that's because of what happened Last episode, where Asaf lost to CT in the elimination, was eliminated, and coming back to the challenge house, people are feeling sad. Berna is feeling pretty sad and telling why she feels sad and how she feels sad to Kylan, who is trying to show sympathy to her, but Jay isn't having it. Jay knows that overall, Kylan is happy that Asaf is gone, and he even accuses Kylan for laughing at Asaf when he was exiting the arena. Kylan says that his laugh had nothing to do with Asaf. It was just pretty poor timing, I'm guessing. But the optics of it is that Jay's upset with Kylan and he's calling him a clown and Kylan just decides to be the bigger person and walks away from the situation and the argument. He walks into the room with Michelle, Coriel, and Mariah telling them to get Jay in check. This is where we see a recalibration of the two alliances that are in the house. We have the Michelle Mafia and Kylan's crew. On Kylan's side, we have Kylan, Horacio, Norris, Raven, Zara, and Olivia, while Michelle's Mafia still has the majority of numbers with everybody else. But after the timer in the kitchen starts ticking down, proving to everybody that we are moving from chaos into the conquest portion, Michelle's mind is thinking of numbers. The more numbers you have, the better insulated you are, and Michelle's worried that Jay's antics and anger and short fuse with everybody will start to alienate not only himself, but also Michelle because she is closely associated with him. So with that being the case, Jay and Michelle go to talk to Norris where it does not end well. Jay instantly is confrontational, blaming Norris for tying the vote that ultimately led to Asaf being picked by CT and being eliminated from the game where Norris is clapping back, telling him, you should not blame it all on me. I only had one vote. Everybody else voted the way they did, and it ended up as a tie. This gets so heated that Norris walks off, and Michelle is angry with Jay, where then Jay makes the claim that Norris and Michelle have stayed safe this entire game all because of Jay. Wow. That is wild, and I would say pretty inaccurate, at least from what I've been watching through the edit. Michelle pops off on Jay, telling him to shut up. You have no idea what you're talking about. My friends have helped you as much as your friends have helped me. Jay has needed more help after flying off the handlebars these past few episodes than Michelle has needed help from him. So that was a wild claim. Jay is not helping his cause, even with his own so-called ride or die at this point who looks to be frustrated with him. But we're gonna put a pin in that because everybody dons their challenge gear to head out to meet up with TJ for this week's challenge, which is a nightly challenge, where TJ gives them the lowdown that they have officially made it to the conquest portion, where everybody is going to be playing a solo game, and because of last elimination's results, they have lost another 10K, and their final prize fund is now at 356,000. Only playing for 356,000 and knowing that that's gonna be split among first, second, and third really brings that old school vibe back to the game. And a few other aspects to this conquest portion of the game will also bring back some old school vibes. But first, let's get to the instructions for this week's challenge called Dark Tide. There will be three heats with five players each that will be getting on a boat, be dropped in the water at some point, where they have to get themselves situated in the water, go claim a paddleboard, and then paddle their way from where they were dropped off all the way back to shore. On their way, they will have to collect three rings. Once on shore, they'll have to get at least one of their rings on their pole. The player that finishes this in the quickest amount of time will be safe, whereas the person with the slowest time will be purged from the game. That's right, if you get last place, you will get purged directly, dropped at this point in the game. Right here, right now, you're gone. I actually think that this was a really fun challenge. I think this was a great first challenge to do in the new setup, in the new phase, as a solo game, because you couldn't help each other. 
I think that was a very important key to this task is that everybody is pretty much going out for themselves. It, this came down to physical ability of getting the paddle board, getting the ring on your pole. Nobody else could help you. It was all on you. In the first round, we have Colleen, Emmanuel, Horacio, Norris, and Raven. No surprise here, Horacio gets out to a very early lead where we see Raven starting to lag behind. Seeing what happened in the mini final last episode, I thought Colleen could be in danger of being purged from this game, but she does incredibly well in the water. Horacio finishes this first, Emmanuel gets second, Colleen gets third, Norris gets fourth, where Raven finally gets fifth, but she's in danger of possibly being purged from this game, coming in last place from her heat. Round two is up, you have Coriel, Kylan, Michelle, Mariah, and Zara, where, no surprise here, Kylan gets off to a very early lead, where Mariah is going the wrong direction, she's going backwards, she has to flip around, she has to turn around. When it comes down to it, Kylan gets first place, Michelle gets second place, Coriel gets third place, Zara gets fourth place, and Mariah is last in her heat. It comes down to the final heat, round three, with Berna, Ed, James, Jay, and Olivia. I thought Jay was gonna smoke the competition. However, it was Ed who took an early lead and never looked back. Ed finishes this heat in first place. Jay gets second place. James gets third place. Olivia just sneaks past Berna to get fourth place, and Berna gets fifth place. We get down to the results, and TJ says the two people that are in danger of getting purged from the game, it came down to Mariah and Raven. Raven was purged. I was really rooting for Raven. I loved her character arc. Coming into the season, I thought she would hide behind the Challenge 38 numbers, but she became the scapegoat for him early on to where she had to play her own game. She won quite a few daily challenges, nominated for three eliminations, winning two of them. And it's unfortunate that her game came down to paddleboarding, which she had never done before. But this came down to performance based and Raven just couldn't outperform at least one person in this challenge. This just wasn't her challenge. And then it comes down to the two people in the top spots to possibly win. It was between Horacio and Ed and Ed was declared the winner. Now, this is where the interesting part of the new deliberation slash selection process will go. TJ will come to the house, and in a public forum, Ed will have to pick somebody to save from elimination. And then whoever he saves has to save somebody else, and so on and so forth, until they get down to three people. And those three people will be taken from the house and to do a private elimination, just the three of them. There is no audience, 1v1v1, where only one person will be eliminated ultimately. Can I just say, I got goosebumps when TJ announced these rules because this is the duel. We're bringing back the dual selection process format in the modern challenge and I love it. I love that we're leaning on old mechanics in a modern game. But oh, how different the game would have been if, say, Mariah was the one purged from the season after this challenge and Horacio would have won this challenge. Because we're gonna see how this game completely swings in the opposite direction for them. Because in the very next moment, everybody's getting ready for a boat day, and upon taking in the new rules of the selection process, we have Jay and Michelle making nice with one another and essentially saying that they have each other's backs, that they were saved, they would save the other one if they were still up there. Norris and Olivia are talking with each other, showing that they still have a strong connection and friendship in the house. Norris has not forgotten what her brother had told her over the phone a couple of episodes back, but Olivia hasn't done anything against Norris in this game, and they're actually on the same side, working with the same people in the game, and they need to work with each other moving forward. But coming back to the challenge house, the game is now getting real. Ed has a very big decision to make. Whoever he saves first will be a domino effect and ultimately determine the outcome by him just picking one person. So Norris and Zara are trying to butter him up, trying to get him to see the light that, hey, your name was floated out there last week by your own alliance. They were willing to vote you in possibly go up against CT, and we helped you out. But now, Ed is thinking, but your intention to save me was just to screw over Jay, 
and not really save me because you like me. Yeah, that's probably true as well, but at least they weren't saying your name. But what we really get is the plan between Michelle J. Mariah and Emmanuel, where they have a conversation trying to figure out a way to ensure that Horacio, Kynland, and Zara will be the three to go into that elimination against each other, ensuring that at least one of those strong competitors is eliminated from the game. And from what it sounds like, Jay came up with the plan that Nerys has to be the person to pick last. Because if they manipulate the order and leave the last five to be Nerys, Olivia, Horacio, Kyland, and Zara, and then get Nerys to save the last person, she would have to choose between Horacio and Olivia most likely, and that is such a tough position to put your so-called friend. I understand the plan, but it is so dirty and so mucky and very messy. Ed likes the plan. Ed is like a is a drama king. He wants all the drama to happen in the house, but he doesn't want to be the one to incite it. He likes the plan. Mariah tells James what to do. I'm going to be chosen. I'll choose you. And then you need to choose Norris. Don't choose Zara, who you've been friends with and came in close into the game with. She'll be up there, but you need to keep her vulnerable and you need to pick Norris. We get to the selection process where TJ makes a house call and Ed goes along with the plan. First picking Emmanuel, Emmanuel picked Berna, Berna picked Colleen, Colleen picked Coriel, then Michelle, then Jay, then Mariah, then James. And James, like a good puppy dog, does exactly what Mariah told him to do and picks Norris. Norris is visibly upset. I mean, a lot of people are upset. Zara is upset with James for not having her back. You have Norris, who hates to be in the position of having to choose between basically three slash four of her friends and alliance members up there. And also Olivia feels really bad about this because she feels like a pawn. How did she get into this predicament? And when it came down to it, Horacio told Norris not to save him, save either Zara or Olivia, and Norris saved Olivia. So the three players playing in the secret conquest elimination game is Kyland, Horacio, and Zara. Now Jay in this moment makes a statement that he is playing from a gamer's perspective and not emotionally, which I don't think either has to be mutually exclusive. I understand this move and the way it went about was perfectly well done by the Michelle Mafia, the alliance on the other side, but it was still done very emotionally that you have been blaming Norris this entire time and you wanted to put her in a very tough spot, which you did. And even his little speech after he was selected and was about to select Mariah, he did make the statement that after recent events and stalemates and how people voted in the last deliberation, I'm gonna choose to save Mariah. You wanted to twist that dagger on the way to getting your way of putting Norris in a really tough position of who to save. So we have the trio of Kyland, Horacio, and Zara don their challenge gear to meet up with TJ, not in the arena, but at a new obstacle course that was set up for this week's elimination. This elimination is made up of three checkpoints where the players are gonna have to complete all three puzzles one at a time, grabbing their flags and bringing it back to their stations. The first two players to finish all three checkpoints will win and stay in the game. This is kind of like a purge elimination. I like the way it was set up. It was just a really tough elimination because all three of these players are really, really strong. It was gonna be really tough to see any one of these three players be eliminated from the game. Now, TJ blows the horn and Horacio and Kylan follow each other to the Sudoku station, which is very interesting. I love that Sudoku has come back around this time on the main season because after what happened in USA season one, if this is reused again, or if any of these stations are reused again, either in this elimination or in the finals, it would be very intriguing to see if anybody doesn't know what Sudoku is or how to play it. Horacio and Kylan decide to tackle that one first, whereas Zara went in the complete opposite direction. She actually started with the easiest puzzle, which was having these three wheels and having to turn them to create six three-letter words. Now, the actual instructions that they showed didn't say anything about body parts, but Zara, Horacio, and Kyland all did body parts and even said that specifically. So I'm sure that was the instructions given to them. It just wasn't written out 
on the actual instruction board. So Zara was able to finish this up really quickly. She then decides to go the middle route underneath the rope in the mud to do the second station. You have to move the disc where all the colors are in their own column. Zara was moving this as quickly as possible, but then Horacio was able to get his Sudoku puzzle done, grab his flag, plant it in his station, and ran off to do the six three letter word puzzle. Kylan was right behind him, they were actually helping each other at the easiest puzzle station. And this is where my hope for Zara to win and stay in the game was diminishing. Because even though she finished the discs, Horacio and Kylan finished their puzzle, grabbed their flags, and planted their flags in their stations before Zara was even done going through the mud. So even though all three players had two flags each at this point, Zara was drastically behind them because she had the hardest and longest puzzle to do. Not only that, but because she went through the mud and then had to get over a wall to get to the Sudoku, she was struggling with that because she was slipping because she had so much mud on her. It was very inspirational to see her get over the wall and then start the Sudoku, but it was too little too late. Horacio was able to finish his last puzzle, win, get first place, and then Kylan finished up his puzzle shortly after him, getting second place, meaning Zara was eliminated from the game. Zara was such a strong competitor. She did so well on this season. I mean, Zara has proven in her three seasons that she is a very, very strong competitor who is here to compete, win at everything, and could win at everything. I really, really hope we see Zara back on the challenge very, very soon. I mean, she lost to some challenge beasts here with Kylan and Horacio. Um, I really enjoyed this challenge. I love how it was ran. I kind of like that there was no audience members around to help in any of the puzzles. I love that there's a shroud of mystery that they are back at the house wondering who's won, who's being eliminated, and we'll get to see their reactions when they come back. I mean, this is exactly, this is so much fun because this is taken from Fresh Meat and Fresh Meat 2 with the Exiles. So not only do we have the Conquest portion having the selection process from the duel, but now we have somewhat like the Exiles format in Eliminations as well. And that's just, that's just so much fun. I wish we would have had this system in place the entire time. I think that this would have been really, really fun. I'm actually pretty happy about how the Conquest portion has started, besides Raven and Zara being eliminated. I kind of wish we would have seen two other people from the Michelle Mafia be eliminated, but the format of this final stage and that it's a solo game and purges and this style of elimination, I actually really enjoyed it. I just wish maybe two other people would have been eliminated, besides Raven and Zara, who I felt were really, really strong competitors, had proven themselves over and over again. And uh, I wish we, I, I just, I, I don't want, I didn't want to see them go. But that's how the game goes sometimes, you know? And now Kylan and his alliance has lost two players so far. But in this game, if one of his alliance members wins, the whole alliance wins because they'll save each other over anybody else that's in the other alliance. So... We're just going to have to wait and see what's going to happen. I'm actually really excited to see what's going to happen next episode with the purge, with the eliminations. I'm just I'm just excited. I really like this format and this could add so much unpredictability going forward in this game. But that's how I feel. What do you think about this? Let me know down in the comments section below. What do you think about the daily challenge? What do you think about Raven being purged? Did you like the idea of a dual type selection process? What do you think about Jay's plan to put Norris in a really tough spot of having to choose between the best friend and the boyfriend? And what do you think about this elimination format and that there was no audience? I truly want to hear what everybody's thoughts about this format and this episode. Please let me know anything and everything down in the comment section below. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who's watching this video up to this point. I'll be back really, really soon with more Challenge 39 content, more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.